or I'm sorry, yeah, our Facebook feed. And we've got Janice over on our YouTube channel. So we're all here and ready to welcome our uh, international audience here on Bean Shop. Let me make sure that I click over and I think I can see you guys here. Let's make sure I can see you on our bead shop feed. And then we'll get down to it. Uh, letting it, yep, I see us on, on the bead shop. There we are, right there. I think it's gonna turn for me here, I think. There we are. And let's make sure I can see you guys on YouTube. And then we will be ready to go. Yep, and there we are live right there. Great. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, it's going to be a fun broadcast today, I think. I hope you guys will really enjoy um, this project that I'm doing today. Um, I'll tell you, this uh, working with kind of loomed projects um, are, I think, a really fun and fast way to create um, gifts, quick gifts, Holiday gifts are also always good for that. There we go. I've got I've got you guys on here now. Um, and I know it's only August, and I know you're saying, Kate, what are you saying? Even letting the word holiday pass your lips. Well, you guys, we are careening into the fall and making time. So this is a great one um, to start jumping in and thinking about who you might want to make gifts for, for, um, for the holidays. They're going to be here. The year is already more than half over. So, uh, so it's a great one. So, uh, I wanted to mention also, we call this leather and looming. And I know I'm a weaver myself, a weaver outside of the bead world. Um, I do a lot of fiber arts. I do, I spin, I knit, I weave also, and I know when I talk to weavers and they're all bead looming, looming just sets everybody's teeth on edge. But looming in the bead world is kind of vernacular for weaving. Um, sometimes it's called bead weaving, sometimes it's called bead looming. So you're gonna have to, uh, when I'm in the bead world, I do use looming kind of loosely to talk about this loom work or bead weaving that we do with the beads. So, um, so that's, so I just wanted to have that little disclaimer for you guys there. You guys can also see that I'm wearing, and I know that some of you guys have seen this as well, and Karen will have this up. Oops, I actually have it on backwards. Let me flip this around. You can see the buttons here in the back. I'm going to flip it around, and Karen will have this up um, the project map up on the website for you guys soon. And Drew is almost done with the epic episode notes uh, for this piece. But this was from the Jade, um, the Jade Dreams curated box that I debuted last Wednesday. And I'm still working on the um, the necklace for the alternate colorway. It's coming out really beautifully, but I'm not rushing it. So, because I really want it to be a stunner. So I'm not just throwing everything into the kitchen sink and stirring it up. So, um, so I was pretty pleased with the way this came, um, came out and it's super comfortable. Um, and it'll be out on a project map so you guys can see it up close and personal on the website, but it's great. I thought I'd wear it today because I feel kind of fancy pants with it on. I also have, and I'll show you, um, here, uh, at the end of the broadcast as well. But as you guys know, Brittany is coming next week for uh, a broadcast, special guest broadcast. <clears throat> she has created a kit. She and I were at uh, the gem show and we were putting things together here at the office and we've created a wonderful kit for her project next week. Um, the kit will be up starting next Wednesday. I'll tell you the date so you guys know what it is. Uh, Brittany will be here on the 14th, a week from today. So those kits go on sale midnight Pacific time on the 14th. We've got 100 as usual, and it's a beautiful little curated collection, and it has everything. It has the thread, the button, and every single bead, plus a little special thank you bead in there for Brittany. The kit is just adorable. So I'm giving you plenty of warning 
right, to set those alarms. I know it seems crazy, but um, we really are so appreciative um, about how you guys are responding to these kits. So thank you so very much. Um, we'll also have a recipe. It'll be really easy for you to assemble if you don't grab the kit or you're watching this later um, or you want to kind of do your own colorway. That's cool. We're going to talk about um, how we created this kit a little bit as well. And then we're going to jump into this really wonderful micro macrame closure. So um, I think it'll be really, really fun for you. So the kit goes on sale Wednesday, August 14th at midnight Pacific time. It'll be linked in the newsletter. Um, you can search it um, on the website. I'll have it uh, on the website as well. So you guys will be able to grab them. But again, if you're unable to grab them, we'll talk about this is actually based on Janice's Tricks of the Trade class. So if you're familiar with Tricks of the Trade or if you um, haven't uh, read Janice's Tricks to the Trade handout, you can prep for next week. Uh, Tricks of the Trade is a um, kind of a bead shop staple that many of our bead shop staff have gone through and taken the class with. And if you go to our website, to beadshop.com, you go to, um, I believe it's under learning, and you go under archived projects. Now under archived projects, you're gonna see a list of a lot of our, um, I don't wanna say, well, I guess older, projects, some that we did when we were a brick and mortar store here in Palo Alto, California in the Bay Area. Um, and you go and you click on Tricks of the Trade, okay? Tricks of the Trade, there's a wonderful PDF that you can download for it um, that Janice has written about it. And it really is her kind of um, signature that she does. So it's a great one to, um, to click on download that PDF and you will be ready for this interpretation of tricks in the trade that we we are uh, of the trade rather that we are marrying with this micro macrame. So I'm really excited to share it with you. So that's what's coming up. We've got some other things. We've I'm planning the calendar like through October. I've got Wire. Wire is making its triumphant uh, return here. Emily is coming, not next week because that's Brittany, but the following week. She has an amazing project called Cascade, Cascade Necklace. Um, and then we've got stuff, really great stuff. Wire, all kinds of other great things. Chain, Chunky Wire, all that stuff. It's coming through October. So we've got a really great um, lineup for you guys coming up. But today, let's talk about today, shall we? Um, I have a lot of uh, samples that I want to show with you, to you, and then we're going to jump in and talk about our uh, leather and looming piece that we've done today. So Baranduin's going to move this camera around, and we're going to get get this show on the road. So I'm going to actually move that guy out of the way. I've got a few wayward beads here, a needle, what a surprise. And we'll bring this over. And then, yeah, it looks like we've got a bunch of people. Oops. A bunch of people saying hi. It's great to see all of you guys here. Jumping in. There we go. And sorry, we've got a few little cords and stuff here. Okay. But we're getting that all done. I love it. Cindy's saying she's on her way to Florida. Your son is driving and you're in the back seat watching Bead Shop Live. I love it. I love it. And don't worry, Angie, you didn't get here late. I'm just getting started, so don't worry. And you guys, you know, you can always watch these um, if you come in late or whatever. It's no big deal. Don't stress about it. Um, you can always jump in. Uh, at any time while we are doing our our work here and then you can always watch them on uh, replay is this okay it was actually it was pointing back so I was trying to get so you don't have to work so oh, okay. far up. all right it was a little tippy though so it makes me a little a little a little seasick I think when I watch it but you can always uh, take find us on our um, 
YouTube channel at beadshop.com or on our website under Facebook Live. So you can find all of those there. So you can watch and rewatch and rewatch. So the archive is always sitting up there for you. Alrighty, so here's the piece. Let me see where I am, Bran, on the on the, the thing here, because I don't think we've caught up. Okay, perfect. Alrighty. So there we go. Let me just move this. Can we move this maybe over just, I feel like we're a little too far over that way. There we go. Is it going to stay? I think so, maybe. Alrighty, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see. We don't want to move it too much. Okay, so here's the piece um, that I did here. And this, um, this kind of uh, has been a long time coming, this tutorial. And people have asked for this for a while. And so I decided with this monthly mix that I would jump in and create this, uh, this project for you guys. So this piece is using our monthly mix, our C star mix. Okay. And I'll talk about this in a minute, but um, this piece here is woven. It's woven on a loom here, this center piece. And these edges here that come down to a point these are laddered, okay? So I know that sometimes this, um, this is a little daunting for people and I am going to remove all doubt about this. It's a lot easier than you think it is, okay? Oh, it looks like my mom is watching. Hi, Ma, I missed you jumping on. It's good to see you guys. Great, it's good to see everybody. It's good to have you, you all here. Um, and so uh, I took the kind of inspiration for this piece, okay, from, I went kind of way back on beadshop.com, and these are pieces that Janice and the crew did a while back, and this, these are tricks, it's called Tricks to Looming, these guys, and you can see from these pieces, and they're finished off a little bit differently, right? We've woven them. You could weave them on your jewel loom or weave them on your deep dish like I'm going to do today. But um, Janice has closed these off with our ultra suede here at the ends. There's a button, and then there's this compassion suede closure. But Janice has done this. If you go to the Tricks to Looming, we've done this in kind of a pattern, kind of a light to dark kind of pebbling pattern. You can really see that here with this one that really lights to darks, which I really love. So you could do this kind of same thing if you wanted, if, like many of you, I know when you um, get these, your monthly mix, you like to sort them, right? So the sorting, uh, you could sort from light to dark and kind of do this pebbling kind of thing that we've got going on here. What I did was I just went random. I went rogue, literally, and just, um, really, and you'll see me when I weave this, I just let the beads slide on my needle as they were. So that's this guy. I also pulled a few other inspirations for you guys. I, I feel like this is something that doesn't get a lot of play often enough. This one's called the Illusion Cuff, and I did the pattern for this Illusion Cuff, um, I don't know, when I first came back to Bead Shop, really. And you can see it's a pattern that kind of starts and goes from dark to light, and it kind of kind of sprinkles intermittent, intermittently, and then goes through right here to this side here. Okay, so it's uh, this is a fun one. So you can find this under Illusion Cuff. And you can see that pretty well, I think, on the on the on the screen. I think it looks pretty good, right? And then I have a couple of other ones. These are leather and looming, and I've called this one. We put this guy under the leather and looming project category, I guess we can call it, because um, it does have leather and it is woven on a bead loom. Okay. But these are the originators of the Leather and Looming, and I know that some of you have made these. These are also really great for fast gifts because you don't have to wrap these. You know, I have them wrapped. Let me wrap it around my arm so you guys can see it, if I can get it around me. Here, if I can do it with one hand. Let me see. Um, and these are just a double wrap. Let me put it on. 
There we go. And it uses, I think this clasp is called Bountiful, this clasp that we have on here. And can you see how it wraps double? It's a double wrap, but it's a super skinny little woven section. It's uh, just three beads across like this, okay? Um, and you can see um, here how it fits into this Bountiful clasp with the five millimeter flat leather and then just a small strip of this woven of this woven bead beaded section here. So these are good times and they're fast and you could just make these a single strand just like this, right? And they would wrap around beautifully. So these are all really great fast projects for the loom. And if you're afraid of the loom, I don't know if afraid's the right word, but if you're apprehensive maybe is the right word about using the bead loom, um, I promise you, these are going to be so easy for you to achieve. You can see this one, I used our studded leather, which I like a lot. This one, I used our stitched leather down the center, which also looks good. So you can find these under Leather and Looming. The other two I wanted to point out, oh, these clasps hold so well, I can't get them off. There we go. Get that over. And you can see here, this one is from our uh, treasure chest. Um, project. And I think it might have been the first project that I did when I got back, um, when I went back on board on Bead Shop. Uh, it cemented my love of the shadow bead. You can see I've got some ADOT um, copper seed beads here and then some half tila beads here. And it was my first piece working with the half tilas. I love it. And so uh, again, um, two strands of the leather, one strand of a loomed section or woven section, and they're glued into the clasp here, which is great. And then we kind of did a second one, <clears throat> kind of that was a little derivative of it in a, in a good way. Um, but this one is uh, called Wild West, and it has kind of a little bit of a boho feel to it. This one, I think Karen, I think Karen did this one, or maybe she did the other one, I don't know, but we we did these guys here. So they were fun. This has the braided leather on the sides, though it could just be the strap leather, whatever, um, and then the woven portion in the middle. And these woven portions also could just be great, just as bracelets, just like this. So this one was Wild West, <clears throat> this one's Treasure Chest. These are called Leather and Looming, this little pile that's here, Leather and Looming. And then uh, we've got Tricks to Looming is what Janice did here, and my Illusion Cuff right here, okay? So um, someone, Beth, asked, isn't that just considered laddering? You know, that is exactly right, Beth, is that laddering and bead weaving or looming are almost exactly the same, okay? And I'll show you, that's a great segue into what we're gonna be doing next. Let me show you real quick the, um, the, the materials that I'm using here. I'm just looking to make sure I've got everything. My materials for this guy, what I did was my mix was called Sea Star. And um, last month was my sister's 50th birthday, I can't believe she turned 50 because I am still 25. I'm not sure how that happened. But we were at Pismo Beach in Pismo Beach, California. And Pismo was a place where we used to vacation and stuff as kids. And you can go out and look at tide pools and stuff like that. So I um, took this inspiration, though I know a lot of you are saying it looks like fall and it does kind of have a fall feeling to it. Maybe I am ready for fall to get here, though I love summer. Um, but it does have a little bit of a fall vibe. Um, but this I called Sea Star, and it's very reminiscent to me of those really beautiful um, starfish uh, that you see in the tide pools, especially here on the California coast. So that was the, um, the kind of inspiration behind this August mix that I did. And I think, Cindy, you were saying you really dug how it was all ADOTs. Well, I knew that I hadn't done a um, loomed or woven bracelet in a while, so I wanted them to all be the same size. And um, weaving, bead weaving or looming with ADOTs, I think goes super fast. Um, it has a really nice kind of chunky look to it, 
but not as super chunk as like a six ought would be. So I did this exactly for that reason. I wanted all eight aughts for this. We also have, uh, for this project, you're gonna need some leather. Now, the leather that's in this is uh, 1.5 millimeter, okay? And the 1.5 millimeter um, I used in the sample, I used Distressed Mahogany. When I decided to do the wrap, I had actually earmarked Distressed Rose. And when I did, when I went to order for the project, our supplier was all out of Distressed Rose, which distressed me, right? Um, so we do have some in stock right now. We'll have it back in when we run out. But I wanted to show you both of these, and they're both listed on the materials list. Okay, um, and Nancy's asking, I hope you have a lot of that mix available. Yes, we do. Don't you worry. We've got plenty in. I just put another batch in this morning, so we've got plenty of these monthly mixes in for you. Um, but they're only here for the month, so make sure you grab them. But I have a little more to talk about that a little bit later, so don't let me forget. Um, so I really like the way that this distressed rose looks, but I also kind of like the deep tones of this distressed um, mahogany as well. So you decide what works out for you for your leather. I used again 1.5 for this. Then I wanted it to kind of have a beachy feel to it, so I used our beachcomber button, <clears throat> and then I was so excited to finish this, you guys. I realized I never added the charm, so I'm going to add the charm to it. I was so excited. I had to get it to uh, to Karen ASAP, and I'm looking at the photo. And I'm like, oh, look how I didn't put that charm on, but I'll put it on today. This is our Star of the Sea charm here, right here. And then I added some, I let some dangles go on this piece because I really like how these look. And you could use anything that has a big star on, or a big hole rather, on these dangles. But I used our sixth sense um, in antique gold. Okay, so I thought it was pretty cool. Then for the weaving portion, the thread I chose was micro -Celon. Now you could use any micro -Celon, or any threads really that you wanted, as long as they fit through the beads here. I chose micro Ceylon because I wanted a little more heft. I wanted it to feel a little bit more like a laddered bracelet than a loomed bracelet, okay? Um, but, so the micro Ceylon is what I used. You could use Ko, you could use Hana thread, you could use um, Ceylon D, uh, any of those that are skinny threads that work with seed beads will work just fine. But I thought the micro Ceylon would be good and it gives me a little bit more of a heavier edge on the side, which is kind of what I like, okay? Uh, so that's that. Then I also had Brandwin grab, I, of course, <clears throat> I was thinking if you did wanna add a metal bead to this, and you can see that this piece that I have here, there's a wrap bracelet portion and then this loomed portion here. If you wanted to add, kind of like I did with Kate's Favorite, and do the shadows, shadows would look really cool here. You could put Tyla beads or Checkmates tiles here. There's so many of these, um, of the beads that will fit. And I just did a two row ladder. This is laddered, it's not, it's not woven, it's not loomed, okay? So <clears throat> you can use any bead you like here, but I thought I'd make this completely the mix. And before I go any further, I'm going to take off bracelet, uh, Brittany's bracelet and I'm going to put this one on because I want you guys to see how it sits. So you can see if I wrap it round and I'm putting it on, you can see where the tassels sit. If I can get this on, let me get it a little closer to me and I'll go back into frame in just a second here. Really? Just a second? There we go. And can you see how when I line everything up, my brace, my wrist is a six and a half inch wrist, so I'll measure this door to door for you guys so you know what this finished length is. But you can see that we have this skinny wrap, just kind of comes across and wraps very nicely on the bracelet. I've also used our wall knot, W-A-L-L. -L. A lot of you really love this knot, I do too. I've used it in here between 
uh, the transitions like this. So you could um, do anything here. You could macrame, you could use um, our actual transition beads for this, you could silk wrap it, whatever you want to do would work just fine, okay, with this. But I thought I'd use the wall knot here, which I think adds kind of some interesting texture to it. If you guys are having, I know some of you are having your usual issues with Facebook, our Facebook feed uh, is nice and strong. I know that sometimes Facebook can get glitchy, so you can always join our broadcast over on YouTube. Okay, so uh, YouTube is going strong as well. So, and it looks like uh, YouTube and Facebook are going neck and neck with viewers, which is which is great. I love it. So I know you guys want to get down to the nitty gritty, but I wanted to show you a couple more things, and then we'll jump into the um, to the actual piece. We have more um, kind of good ingredients on bead shop that you could interpret, make your interpretation of these guys. I know that some of you have been saying turquoise, turquoise. Well, we do have, we have a variety of these Miyuki ADOT mixes that are already pre-mixed, okay? And we have them, this one's called, well, it's called green. Nice. Nice one, Ridgebird. That one's called green. This one is called blue. Blue. <laughs> it is. It really is. And this one stone. is called stone. Yep. So it's a little more, a little fancier, right? But we have a variety of these. These aren't the only ones that we have here, right? But all you really need to do to achieve a piece like this is you can create your own ADOT mixes. This has a variety of transparent, opaque, matte, and shiny, right? And one tube of these guys not only makes this one bracelet that I've got here, but it also, you'll see when I pull my sample in, it's gone that much further and I still have this many beads left. So it goes a really long way, one of these tubes does. Um, and then just choose your leather. For this one, for the stone mix, I chose 1.5 millimeter um, metallic pearl. I chose the Oyster Ceylon. I used our Resting Buddha Pewter, and then this is our Flower Drum Song button here. Okay, and these, uh, these look great, I think. This one here in the blue mix, I did pull turquoise, and some of you are saying turquoise with my Sea Star mix looks gorge. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So this is um, the turquoise 1.5, but I thought it really looked nice with the blue. We also have a royal blue um, leather that would look nice with this. This is the teal micro Ceylon, the organic bee button and then Oasis, this lotus flower in gold as well. And then finally, I'm gonna scoot this over. We have this one in the green, and I chose Distressed Dark Green. Though we have some lighter greens as well. I don't know why I went dark with it, but I did. Um, so I chose the Charcoal Micro Ceylon. Though you can brighten this up with Distressed Light Green would be beautiful. You could also really contrast, look at how nice that goes with the turquoise. It's really beautiful as well. Um, this guy, and then I chose one of my favorite buttons, the crossed arrows, and then the flight um, feather uh, charm in copper. So it's really, e this is almost a no brainer for this, right? You can just jump in, um, find a leather color that you like in 1.5 and just start adding some colors. Again, the mixes, we have a bunch of other mixes, these ADOT mixes um, on the website, so they look really great, okay? Yeah, purple um, would also, um, Paulette would look great with this too. I was looking at the purple. You could also use the Greek leather in 1.5. This is the Indian leather, but you could definitely use the Greek, um, whatever works for you guys, okay? So let me move these to the side and let me get, I've started the sample, but I want to show you guys how to um, put um, 
how to put your loom together here, okay? So what I've got in front of me here, this is our deep dish design board. Though so you could use a shoebox lid, you could use, you know, a little tray that you might have at home, but I really like this deep dish because it does give me um, some length, some, not length, some width, I guess, to work with underneath so that I don't, uh, so I can get my hand underneath there. There we go, move it over a little bit. Um, so when I'm actually weaving, I can get my hand underneath, so it's good. So this is the deep dish. I have a gray um, uh, velvet pad underneath. And the rule of thumb for this is, now I, I'll lay this one out. Uh, you can see here, here, right here. I'm sorry if the video is looking a little bit dark to you guys. It's looking okay here. Make sure you guys that the resolution, not the resolution, but the brightness on your screens are turned all the way up because it's really bright on our end, on both, on both of our screens. So double check, just check your settings and make sure that you've got that, um, your um, backlit, your lighting all the way up, okay? So now for this, I'm also seeing it's a little tilted. It's making me a little, just a touch off. I'm going to move this over just a little bit, move this over so I get it right in there. There we go. I think this is a little less tilted, maybe. We'll see. So the deep dish, you can see here on this side, I've set up how I'm looming. And Brandon, can you kind of um, zoom in right over here on this side here? The, um, the, what I've got going on here for rows for beads, let me show you, is I'm going to count. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beads across, okay? So that means on the board, what I've done is I've wrapped the Ceylon six times, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to show you the back in just a second. Then I have two, one, and two of the leather cords running down the side. Now the rule of thumb when you're warping your loom is that um, if my beads are seven across, seven rows across, I need eight threads okay, on my loom because you need one more thread than you have, um, uh, one more thread than you have beads, okay? So with this, six and seven and eight makes enough for the seven beads across. Now let me turn this over to the back, okay? And in the back, <clears throat> I'll show you, I'm gonna turn this around. Can you see how I have wrapped the Ceylon, wrapped around, wrapped around, I just get my Ceylon spool and I just wrap it around my board and I tie it together, it's tied together right here. So it's one long continuous wrap, I just bring it around, wrap and wrap and wrap. I want it to be pretty tight but not so tight that this has too much tension on it, okay? because if the tension uh, is too tight when you clip this off the loom, your woven piece is gonna buckle a little bit. So we want it tight, but we don't want it overly tight, okay? Then on either end, either side, I tied on a length of leather cord, and it's tied on here, and it's tied on here. We wanna tie them on tight, but we also wanna be able to untie these leather cords later because we're gonna need them. Okay, so you don't want to leave this on there forever, right? Because you want to be able to unknot it and not have a kink here, all right? So <clears throat> let me measure this door to door and tell you how long this is. Door to door from the button to the end here is two wraps. It's about 14 inches, okay? So I need... What I did was, I think I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'm going to undo this one, and I'll tell you exactly how much 
thread or how much leather I put around. I came here, <coughs> it goes here, and I've given myself plenty of room. So maybe about there, and it goes to about here. Let me measure this and tell you. It is, I was gonna say it's about a yard. It's a little under yard, it's about 33 inches or so here. Okay, that's about the length that you need. All right, so I am going to um, jump in and flip it. Okay, all right. So uh, let me, I'm just looking here, it's like I got a little, uh, Emily, you're saying you don't feel like you're part of the club. Oh my gosh, Emily, just relax. <laughs> Everybody's welcome. It's good to have you. We get new people. It's really been cool. I've been kind of looking at stats and stuff. And so many of you are new viewers, which is awesome, um, which is great. So um, I love that you guys are all here. And we try and, you know, mix it up. I do wire. I do beads. I do all kinds of other stuff here as well. I'm going to take my necklace off because it's making up sound against the table. If beading isn't your thing, that's cool. You know, I'm, I, it's, it's all, it's all love here. That's right. I know you guys are also seeing some noise in the background. Um, our office in the back has these servers that make this horrible noise, which we're trying to get fixed. But there's a, a like a vent here right above my table that carries this noise. So, I really hope that next week this noise will be no more. So yeah, just pretend it's doves. That sounds perfect to me. Um, so yes, so for this Ceylon, it's wrapped continuously around the board here and here. And then these two are just separate pieces, two 33 inch pieces over here, okay? So there you have it. So now to get started with this woven piece, um, I'm going to dump out, so you can see what I have left over from my tube. I don't even know where my empty tube is. But not only did I do this whole bracelet here, I had enough to do this section over here. And then I had this many beads over here as well. Okay, so um, yeah, we can say the, um, the, um, uh, that the noise is also an owl. You can make it anything you want. But hopefully, you know, our landlord, he's a great guy. And when I contacted about him, that his servers were starting to, um, to kind of die. He was all, oh, I'll take care of it. Well, we'll make sure it gets a, uh, he's, he's on it. He's on it. So, um, so thanks for sticking with me on it. Um, okay. So the woven part that I've done over here, let me measure it out for you and tell you. Uh, <clears throat> I should have, yeah, it should be about six inches, about six inches here. On my finished piece, I'll tell you how long this is, the woven part is, actually, I went a little too far. What a surprise. The woven part on this piece here, my finished piece, is about five and a half inches. So I went a little far here, but that's fine. Doesn't matter, okay? Doesn't matter. Um, so when I start, after I've wrapped and put my leather here, and Bran, I'll let you kind of focus in on this side for now. I'm going to grab my Ceylon, and I'm going to start anywhere. That's the cool thing about looming on a board like this. I like to start kind of in the center, because then I'll weave up to the top and weave down to the bottom, so that I'm not worried about, um... I don't know, you know, starting at the end and measuring all this. For now, just start, okay? So I'm gonna take my Ceylon and see how when I take it off the spool, it's a little curly, curly. Well, I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit as I pull it off of the spool. And I am reeling off, I don't know, a yard-ish, right? I'm gonna show you how to change threads, so. I know changing threads makes everybody just want to throw up, but everybody just relax. It's going to be okay. Uh, where did my other needle go, though? There we go. 
in your big eye needles, and I've used big eye needles for this weaving project. You can use the small ones. I've used the small big eye needle over here, the short one I was using. Now I'm using one that's a little bit bigger. Doesn't matter, okay? So I'm gonna come in with this big eye needle, loop this, come through the center of the big eye, and then I've got all my thread here. Now I'm gonna dump out a few beads from my dish and remember, I've got seven channels here. So when you're wrapping, you'll probably wrap, wrap your thread and it'll be wide. Just kind of push it in, like here at the ends right here. I'm going to push them in so they're kind of even. And when your beads go on here, it will also uh, pull everything into, um, into alignment here. Okay, so let me put on seven beads. All right, one, two, three, four, five six and seven, not worrying about what they are, what's laying next to the other, one next to the other, doesn't matter, okay? So I'm gonna bring my beads underneath and I'm gonna leave myself a pretty good size tail over on this side. This is maybe, I don't know, 10 inches or something over here, okay? Just letting that hang out. Now, with my beads, I'm gonna push them up in between these little lanes. Can you see that? So every every bead is sitting in its own little space. All right. And I've gone from underneath, so now I'm going to come up and just push that needle through the top of those beads and pull it through. Okay. Now some people like to come in and reinforce this first um, row, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go in and do my second row. So that's three four, five, six, and seven. So see how your thread is coming over. You've passed it and you've come over the top of the beads. Now I'm gonna pass these beads underneath, right? Under, 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 under. And see how the thread goes over the side of the leather? and comes underneath. So that's why it looks kind of like laddering. Essentially, you guys, this is the infinity stitch with lanes running down the middle. Okay, it's the exact same thing. Hey, Bryn, can I ask you to maybe turn the air on? Sure. Because it's, um, <laughs> these, all these lights, Brendan turned up the lights. I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little warm, okay? But I put this through and I'm coming back through and here's my next one. Notice how my thumb kind of helps with thread management here, right? Tighten it up. And you want everything to be nice and firm, but you don't want it to be so tight, 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 that um, that it's going to buck, buckle or warp, right? Um, yeah, and Emily's saying you did this for weaving, for wall weaving. Yeah, but right? It's not weaving with beads is not, um, don't, as Janice likes to say, don't make it into the Spanish Inquisition. It's not that difficult. One, two, uh, two, four, six, seven. You just kind of, you know, warp that box and, um, you know, and start to weave. This here, you know, push them up underneath and see how now your little rows have, um, are just lined up nicely right so la 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 you come in wait you guys you haven't seen you ain't seen nothing yet I'm gonna do one more row because I can and this is good times you could like Brittany did with the Bollywood bracelet you could set your tray up all the way across with like four of these right so when you're weaving you just weave 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 boom then you're ready to um, to go on to the next step. Two, four, six, seven. The hardest, I have the hardest time just counting to see how many beads go on my needle. And see, this big eye needle is perfect, right? And Teresa's asking, can this technique be worked up on the jewel loom? Well, it can, but for the wrapping part, I feel like the deep dish is easier. And you'll see, um, Teresa, why I say that in a minute. So just hang tight, okay? So uh, I'm gonna just do this and we'll run that through. Okay, boom, done. 
Alrighty. So now, once you've woven, and through the magic of television, I'm going to go over here, and we can widen this up a little bit now, Bran. Uh, I'm going to come over here, and you can see uh, that I've got my piece going on over here. So before I go any further, okay, I want to show you guys, this one's complete and ready to go. I want to show you how I finish this. Now you are going to um, be weaving threads in, uh, weaving threads off this piece a lot. So what I want you to do is, I want everyone to collectively take a deep breath with me because it's going to be okay. It's, it's easier than you think and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so just stick with me. So I've done this length. This is six inches long, right? The whole six inches right here. And on my finished piece, it was five and a half, but it's no big deal. It just means that this wrap portion will be a little um, shorter, so it's really fine. Um, so uh, I'm gonna come in, see how I ended right here with my uh, loomed piece. And what I did was when I got kind of down to this other side here that I have going on, I wove, 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 and then down, and then I wove up, up, up. Okay, so um, I start in the middle and I go up and down here. All right, so here. See how I have my last row. All I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce it. See how my thread hasn't gone over the leather, so I'm just going to reinforce it. I'm going to pop the needle up so that my thread goes around the leather, and now I'm going to send it back through. And I don't even have to send it back through all the beads. Maybe I'm going to send it back through, I want that bead, like half the beads right there. Okay? Then I pull it tight. Now, I'm going to just weave this down back and forth. These dot beads have huge holes. So I can just, and you want to tighten it down. That thread isn't going to show. It just looks like a warp thread. Your warp threads show a bit more with micro -Celon, but I kind of dig it. It's a little textile forward, I guess so you can really see the threads, but you could use KO or a thinner thread of your choice if you didn't want the threads to show as much. So see how I'm just weaving this back down, putting it in, and I'm weaving it in the middle of the beads here. Now maybe I'll just go for two, and I can go, I'm gonna go two more, and I'm gonna turn a corner, so I'm gonna come back up, like so, and if if I want to, and let me get a piece of paper so you guys can see this, okay? And this is just weaving the thread, your extra thread in at the end when you have extra thread, okay? So we're going to, um, uh, we're gonna come in and you know what? I should have done it. I, the beauty of a live broadcast, you guys. I just saw Beth Sales ask me, why did you do this step? You know, I wanted to show you how to weave off, but I also want to show you that your ending thread you can continue to use. So you're going to get a little lesson in unweaving. It's okay. I'm not going to weep big tears. I'm just going to undo this one and I'm going to show this to you on the other side. I was trying to combine my demos. Poor form Richburg. So I do want a ghost, but see it came out. It's okay. It's all good. I just pulled it out. Not a problem. Because this ending thread you can continue to use, and that's what I want to do. So let me just finish it off. This one to reinforce it. 
and I'm going to put this there. Let me go to this side, this side over here, the other one that I did. And you guys saw, saw what I did, right? So I'm not going to do it all over again. But I weave back through. I weave back through. Go in there. I'll weave back through a couple of, couple more. Turn the corner, and then I'll come in And if it's nice and tight and woven, you know, back several rows, I'll come in and then I'll clip away my extra thread. And that's how I weave in an end. Then I just start and weave in as I wove off by starting a new thread. And I'm gonna to need to start a new thread on this other one, so you'll see me do that there, okay? And then you just clip this and you're good to go. Okay, that's how you get rid of that thread. But let's go back to the big one over here, this long one. So now, once you have woven your thread off on this side, right, and cleaned it up on this side, and you, might, you may or may not still have thread coming up here for this. If you have a short little piece of thread at this end, you actually want to weave some more thread in so you have a piece of thread to work with here, okay? So now I'm gonna take this off the board. So let's make the, um, the, photo, the picture kind of big, Bran, so everybody can see. And I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna untie my knots here. Okay, and again, the knot that I use just to tie this is just a overhand knot or a half hitch knot like this, like the first knot I used to tie my shoe. And I come back in and tie another one over the top. Okay, that's it. All right. So now I'm gonna untie that one and I'm gonna untie this one. Untie it, there we go. There we go, and now, here at the back, I'm going to cut these threads. You ready? One, two, three, and cut. All right. So now we're going to take it off, take it out, and look, we've got our loomed piece right there. We're not going to take our let our board go very far because we're going to use it again. So now we've got all of these pesky warp threads to deal with, right? And we've got a good length, so we're just going to weave them in. All right, so let's get our, <clears throat> let's get our, where's our needle? There it is. And we're just gonna weave them in. So it looks like, Beth is asking, do you switch from bottom to the top? How do you go all the way up and then trim it? So yeah, so what I would do, Beth, for that is I'm over here, right? And I'm weaving, I'm going down to the bottom. And then maybe once I, run out of thread, I'll use this extra thread that's up on the top and weave up. So I get about five and a half inches here of length. So I just kind of go back and forth from the bottom top, bottom top, until it's long enough the length is, okay? Uh, so then, now I'm gonna weave these ends in from the loom. And it can be a little tedious, but you just, by the time you weave all these in, you're gonna be in good shape. All right, so now here with this big eye needle, the needle, the thread kind of grabs down in the bottom of the eye of the needle here. And now I'm gonna come in and see where this leg is coming out between these two beads. I'm just gonna put it to the bead to the left of it, right, if it's in my view, the, the warp thread, this is the warp thread that, um, that, is, uh, that I'm weaving in. So I just go and I go two beads over and I pull it through, okay? So see how it's just kind of turned the corner and come those through those beads. Now, just like I did before, I'm gonna weave back and forth with these two beads. All right, here we go. 
and this is going to weave here back and forth and you're just weaving that warp thread in weaving that warp thread in okay like that and I don't know go down a few I've gone down four maybe then my little trick you don't have to glue it but if you feel like you want to glue okay you can I'm going to put that post-it note right there so you guys can see. I'm going to get a little bit of hypo cement, which I had out here a second ago. Here it is. The hypo. And I'm going to put a little bit of hypo on the thread that's going to pass through the bead. See that? Just a little. And again, don't um, pull that out of the way and then the glue is still on the thread and I'll go back through the next two and that glued thread will just go right in and then I will cut that one away one down all right so if you um, are attempting this piece and I hope you do I would, just like Brittany said, with West County Cuff, okay, you want to take this in stages. Weaving in the ends can be a little tedious. So you have to be in the right frame of mind to weave these ends in. So if you do the weaving part and you're like, all right, good job me. Wait till the next day, okay? And then come in and say, today I'm gonna conquer these warp threads. And just weave them in one at a time, like this. And again, these A dots have such big holes. See how I went back through three there instead of two? That's what my needle wanted to do. Now, if you're having trouble gripping the needle, sometimes my hands don't always want to grip. All right, come in with your chain nose plier and that'll just help you pull it through. Okay, then I'm gonna clip this one away. We're almost there, we're two thirds or a third of the way there. Get that end. And this is why I cut the threads on the back when I cut them cut them in the middle of the board okay so this I can keep going in the same direction here or I could always weave this back on the other the other two now through the beads to the left or the right doesn't make any difference now that I'm in the middle but if you cut your threads if you don't cut your threads in the middle of the board you're not going to have enough thread to weave the tail in tails in. You can even weave them through one bead. That bead might be getting a little plugged up, so I'm going to go through this bead. There it goes. Your weaving should be pretty supple, right? Again, not so tight that your beads can't move around, but just weave them back. I might weave them back one or two more rows than I'm showing you on air because I want to get this done. But don't let these warp threads thwart you, right? I've done three. I only have three more to go while we're sitting here and chatting. It's okay, right? And it is a little tedious, but you know, some days I like this tedious work. And save it for a day when you're feeling like super focused or, I don't know, that you can really conquer. See, this needle just wants to go back through three. So let it. It's okay. It's all right. Now I'm just gonna go down the row. They're zigzagging like Lombard Street in San Francisco, right? I'm making this turn, then that turn. If I can't pull, give yourself a little extra tug with the plier. 
come on back through. Then I'll just have two more to go. This one just wants to go through one, so I'm going to let it. Okay? And I'm going to clip it. And the leather, yeah, Teresa, you are observing correctly. The leather um, is really helps this to sit nicely. And, you know, it. you also need to decide what type of jewelry design works for you, right? Julie's mentioning that tedious finishing just makes her crazy, all right? So if finishing isn't your jam, you know, do something else besides weaving or, or do it in a different technique, you know? You can do this like what Janice did with her tricks to looming. This one just wants to go through one. But if it's something that you don't like doing, what I find is if I get hyper-focused and I just take each step as it comes, right, and I don't think too far ahead and I just try and accomplish each little bit as I go, it'll be over before you know it, right? Just like my mom's foot surgery. It was over before we knew it. So you really want to think about making your choices as neat as you can. Always in such a good mood. Yeah, Brandwin just snorted at that one. She's all, oh my God, you're kidding me, right? No, I I try. Yeah, yes, you were. Oh, Brandwin! No, just kidding. I was just thinking um, how long I've known you. That's right, it's true. Well, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. And if we're going to do this, let's do it right. But again, I've been stitching with a needle for most of my life. So this is second nature to me. Okay? So I, um, so stitching is something that is easy for me. For some people, handling this little needle, you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna, this is not for me. So just, but don't worry. I've got, see this bead is a little askew. I'm gonna put the thread in there and see, or the needle in there and see what's up with that. What is up with that bead that's askew? Let me see. Let me see if I can straighten it out with another row. Yeah, see if I just pull the thread up, now I'll just weave it into this top row right here. It brings that bead into alignment. I like this big eye needle too. Cindy's commenting she likes the big eye. I do too. It's stiff enough that it goes through all these beads, but it's really pretty malleable. I'm putting a lot of thread through this bead. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to cut it off here. I would normally go down a little bit further, but you can use your thread burner or your thread snips and clip this away. Okay, so I, so Brandon, get in here kind of close because I want, I want you guys to really see what this looks like. So see, they're, they're woven in and you can't see the threads and it's because I really pulled and I pulled those um, those threads in nice and tightly, not so tight that it warps, but tightly enough so it's neat, right? So I think it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Not too bad. Looks excellent. Yeah, who knew? It's like I've done this before, maybe just <laughs> once, all right? So I'm not going to weave these other ends in because we'll do the closure uh, for this, but you would just come in and you'd treat this other end like this. So let's look at the big picture here, Bryn. Right. And I'll show you guys. So here, you've got some length here, and I'm going to um, put the finished piece up here for you guys too. Okay? So now what we've got is this end, I want to get all of these little threads together here, and I'm going to kind of tie a loose knot to kind of get them out of my way. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to flip this so you can see the back. Now, this loomed portion, the woven portion, is here, 
And can you see how I have now, I'm now going to start to ladder. So I start to taper down and ladder here, and I start to taper down and ladder here on this side. And can you see after I've tapered over here to close, I bring my leather through, I go through this button, back through, and I've silk wrapped this. Okay? You can just, um, this is silk wrapped, you can um, flat macrame it, do the flat macrame stitch. You could uh, just simply tie a knot here, right, and have that all come together. Or you could use one of our transition beads and crimp this as well. Um, Bran, would you also grab the, um, we didn't grab a button. Oh no, I have a button. I have the other buttons. I'll show you how I do this. I probably have one that has a small shank. I want to show you guys how I do that. But over here, so I'm going to go to this end over here, okay, because we want to continue on down with this. So let's start our laddering portion of this. And Ellen asks, could I have one of those warp threads do the laddering? I could, Ellen, but the warp thread is kind of short, and I want my warp thread to actually start from the side. So I'm going to show you this one that I had left over that's on the side here that I wove that was my weft thread I could use for the laddering. But I'm going to add a new laddering thread over here on this side. Okay. So for tapering, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, and you want to make sure that you have enough thread left over here. I mean, you could add cord, you know, you could do a section and make this a multiple wrap. You could end it, end it in one of like our rings, like our Jardin ring or our mini hoop, and then continue, you know, like we do any of our laddered pieces. But this one is just perfect for that, for that second wrap. So let's ladder. I'm going to get my my um, my board back and ready to go. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to clip. Now you could use a little um, I don't know a little piece of leather or a baggie or something over the top of this, right, to protect your beads. But the beads here, are, the clip here, honestly, it has that that plastic coating so I've been doing it that way and it works out just really nicely okay so I'm gonna come back in and we're gonna weave in a thread to ladder I'm actually gonna make this a little bit longer there we go and uh, let me cut another piece of Ceylon so let me do a board length is 14 inches so that's one two and three okay and I'm going to clip this away. I'm going to try and find where I tossed my big eye needle, which is over here. And I'm going to weave in this warp thread, or this laddering thread now. And now I'm going to use Infinity Stitch. So can you see here at the end of the board, okay, and I can, we can go down a little bit here so you guys can see that. I'm going to kind of fasten my, my leather down there. And I could lift this with my seal on. So I've got a little bit of lift. Okay. So now I'm just going to come in in the middle of these beads somewhere. Somewhere where I have some room. Because I've woven in all of those warp threads. That looks like a pretty good spot. Okay, get my plier because again my hands aren't gripping. There we go. Goes through. And when I attach you guys, I'm attaching in the middle of all of this weaving because I don't want extra threads around the outside. Okay. So now I'm going to just go back here. Let me see, it's a little far from my field of vision. Bear with me. I can get that needle in there. It's a little tight, so I'm going to go over to this side. This one should be open. Yep, that's open. So I'll go through there. 
There's that tail. Now I'll go here. Through that side, I'm not going around the leather. I'm just going just on the inside of it. Come on, go through. There we go. And now, there it is. And now I'm going to put it into position for the laddering, and I'm going to do infinity stitch for my laddering. I heard that collective groan all over the world, but I like infinity stitch, so that's what we're going to do. You could do regular laddering if you wanted and have your threads come out, you know, both ends, right? But I'm going to, I think infinity is easier for this. Okay, so there it is, threads in position. I could add a little bit of glue here if I want, but this is really in there. It's not going to go anywhere. My threads are pretty tight, so I'm just going to go ahead and clip that tail off. All right, so now we're ready for infinity. No big, right? Everybody take a deep breath. It's all right. Everybody just calm down, and let's do it. So this had, how many beads did this have? It had seven beads across, right? So now my next one, I'm going to taper like this. Okay, so my next row has six. So let's put on six beads. After I take a bracing drink of coffee, and we're gonna go six. One, two, four, six. Okay. And we're just gonna bring them underneath. Let me get these over so you guys can see. Right, so infinity. I'm going under like this, almost like we're looming, right, you guys? But there's no warp threads here, okay? Now I've gone under the leather on my right side. Now I'm going to go over. The leather. and through the beads. Okay, so they're around. Now I need to make sure I don't want to go too tight here. See how my thread is coming over the leather on this side? If I have six beads here, how many beads do I put on now? Because I'm tapering. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. under the leather just like I'm looming tightening it up a little bit bringing it in so it's looking good and now back through that top it's a little bit of a modified um, infinity because you can you can go under the leather and then back up or over the leather and back underneath as long as you're creating that figure eight however you do it is going to work just fine so see how this is coming in there now how many beads do I need three right one two and three and don't worry make sure that your tension is kind of tight I know that you're seeing like this little gap here don't worry about that. We're going to come back and fix it. Just don't even stress about that. Come in with my three. Just have two more rows to go, everybody. She says bracingly. All right, there we go. It's a little bit out of my vision range, so bear with me here just a second. I'm going to undo, I undid my clip there just a little bit, because sometimes too much tension makes this sit a little funny. Now I'm going to go back through. It's a little bit of space there, but it'll all be taken up. Come on now. Go from five to three? That nope, that's five, that's four. Okay. Two, four. Oh, did I? 
I did. That's why I'm having trouble. Good one, Brandwin. Actually, I think uh, Beth caught it. Good one, Beth. And Teresa. And Your Kelly. eagle eyes. <laughs> nice one. That's why I was struggling. You knew that something... There we go. Sorry. Again, it's out of my sight range. Good one. There we are. Four. 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 Everyone's telling me four. Yeah, and you're right. You guys. Yes. <laughs> That's why it takes a village to get my live broadcast going. And so if you're struggling like this and you don't know the reason, count your beads. There we go. Now it's three. Now it's time for three. One, two, three. Over the top, underneath. Tighten it up. And see how that's tapering in really nicely? And again, don't worry about the gaps. I'm going to show you how to fix those up. But I do want to worry about that gap. I don't want it to be too gappy. There's three. I'm using the big eye that's maybe the second largest. I don't know. Um, Tess is asking, so why wouldn't you leave the warp threads on and just reduce them to taper? You know, you could, but then you still have all these warp threads at the end to deal with and to weave in, right? You'll still have all these warp threads down here. And for me, it's easier to weave in down here when I've got a lot of space than trying to get all five of those or six of those warp threads down through here, at least for me, right? So you could, you could like maybe bring a, f a couple together and do maybe row five and then maybe weave that one back in and then bring a couple together in row four and then bring them back in. You could do that too. So I think that's a great way to kind of tackle it if you wanted. But I like getting rid of those warp threads because I like to just concentrate ordering on my laddering at this portion. But if that works for you, you do it. So there's two, and let's do this last one. And then I'm going to show you how I dealt how I deal with this. And if your loomed piece is a little thinner, I mean I've made this really super wide right so if it's a little thinner you you can also kind of look at it that way I'm going to take it off of the thing here of the board and I want to show you so we take it off the board and we just make sure that everything now is sitting correctly okay and I'm going to come in and I'm going to reinforce this top portion I'm going to go through twice once But try it. I'd be interested to see how, you know, you can always reduce those warp threads as you go along a little bit more. But I liked, I liked getting them out of my life. They kind of bother me when I'm trying to do this portion. So I'm going to go through a couple of times. So this last little one is, um, is nice and even. So now I want to get rid of this thread right because I'm going to tie my wall knots so what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave this thread back down through the center and this is going to kind of connect the rows especially when it gets a little wide so I'm just going to weave to get rid of this thread weave it on back through See, so it comes out there. Now I'm going to go here. And just weave it through wherever you think it looks like your needle should go. I'm not wrapping around the sides, though. I'm weaving it in the beadwork. See that there? Now I'm going to jump down to that row and go to, like, that third one over. And now I'm going to jump down to this row. Maybe I'll just weave it to that, that far. 
Yeah, Tess, totally experiment. I love it when you kind of take a theory and run with it. See, this is where you kind of have gapping sometimes right here between this triangular portion and your weaving section. And see here, so now I'm going to weave it back into this top row of my loomed work. I know there's a lot of weaving back in, you guys, but... And then I'm going to turn the corner back up and weave it back up here. There we go. So can you see how I'm going to put this down now? And look at how nice and clean and together that is. I could take this down a little bit more if I wanted, weave it back through a few more just to make sure that nothing's going to come out. And you could, um, come on, pull through. There we go. And this one. I'm just going to cut it. You could watch me weave this back through all day, but you get it, right? So yeah, so this little weaving portion that I've done here, Francesca, to answer your question is it kind of marries the laddering that I've done up here and the looming that I've done out here. So all you do is we've loomed, so I'll go back over this just real quick so that we're all on the same page. Then I'll show you the wall knot and we'll close it and we'll be done. Um, so here, right, once I've finished with my long loomed portion, I cut my tails away and I have these long, these are called the warp threads here. The thread that you weave with is called your weft thread, all right? And your weft, you remember that this is called the weft because weft rhymes with right and left. And this thread goes from, you know, the right to the left. That's your weft. Your warp is what you string your beads in between, okay? So I clip them, and then all of these warp threads get woven back into the body of the piece down here, right? If you want to try kind of doing your laddering kind of, you know, laddering in between and then just cut one thread at a time off, you could try that too. Totally experiment and see what works for you, okay? Uh, then you reposition your piece on the board and do an infinity stitch to a taper, all right? And you do that on both sides. If this were the button side, what I would do is I'd get my button and I'll show you here with a button that has a smaller shank, you can just put your button on one cord, hold the other cord kind of next to it, bring it around, and you can silk wrap all of these guys together. And see how what I would do is, see how that loop just sits there? And I'd silk wrap from here to here, and that's what would close that off. Or I could flat macrame that, right? Or I could have slid a transition bead on here, slid this leather back through, and crimped it flat. Okay? Easy peasy. All right? If you have a button like this guy here, our beachcomber button, the button is almost, the shank is almost the right size. What I do in that case is I angle cut my leather so that when I get my button, and I put, this one's also kind of small, but I get my button through, and then I get my angle cut piece through. That angle cut piece will go right through that shank. You can really angle cut it at a nice sharp angle and then kind of grab it with your pliers and pull it through. Then you'll be ready to go. Okay, and again, bring it back around on itself. And can you see how I just left the tails and I put those little dangles on the end? I could come in and cut them off this way if I wanted to, though, close. But I like the looks of the dangles here. Okay, so now 
With this side though, if we're doing these wall knots or snake knots sometimes they're called, I have a whole free tip Friday on how to do this. It was back in May, in May 18th of 2018, and it's called the wall knot um, broadcast, and it's on Free Tip Friday. You can find it on the Free Tip Friday list on our YouTube feed or on our website. But the wall knot is super easy. I'm going to show you. I'm going to go from the left. I'm going to pin this back down. I'm going to go to the left side, grab my left cord loop it so it goes underneath. See how the loop goes to the back? Now this strand on my right just goes through the loop, out to the left side, come on through the loop, out to the left side, and back down the loop. I'll do it again. I'll do it a couple of times. And then just kind of walk it up. Okay, and again, loop so the loop comes from underneath, through the loop, underneath everything, and see where that little X is there? That's kind of like how you're, where you're aiming it, underneath everything, and then back down through the loop. loop underneath, going from the top through the loop, and you can just kind of aim it as you go through the loop, aim it towards the back here. Okay, then right here at the bottom portion of that original loop, take that thread through, that cord through, and tighten. Down through the loop, like that, and then just flip it right around and go back down through that self same loop. That's four. And underneath, through the loop. And make sure, this is the secret, don't make the loop so that the, the loop is coming, the thread is coming on top. Your, your thread coming out of the loop needs to go underneath that thread. See that? Then this goes in from the top, underneath that cross, and just turn it right back around and bring it back through that original loop. There we've got five. Okay. So now you're going to ladder, and you don't have a lot of cord left for laddering. Okay, but you don't need a lot of cord left here, really. Um, I made mine, you can see you're going to have, I made this length a little bit big, a little bit long, but can you see how our wall knots are here? Then you're just going to start your infinity stitch, and you're going to just come right on down. And this section is actually going to be a little bit shorter because see how I made this loomed section a little bit bigger. So I only need to ladder for this section about, and I was also going, let me tell you, I was going the short way across on this board when I did this guy here right, the original, I went the long way across. So it actually gave me a little more leather to work with. Um, and you saw I cut about 33 inches. I might cut about a yard, um, about 36 inches for this whole thing for each of the sides. But this is gonna afford me enough, I think, to use here. So I'm only gonna ladder here for like four inches anyway. Okay, like that. And so just to add your thread on here, I'll show you, but you guys know how to do this with infinity. You've done this before. I'm gonna put this guy here. These guys go over here. And I don't wanna pull it too, too tightly, 
but I've got my thread in my big eye needle and I just start with tapering with one bead. I'm going to come underneath. Even a single row of beads would look nice. And on this first infinity, we're getting close to the end here, you guys, so thanks for hanging, hanging out. Um, this first infinity, I just go under, I want to reinforce this first one. And again, you can make also regular, uh, you could do regular laddering for this also. Okay, and then uh, you just continue to go to go along. I'm going to go back through because I always start my infinity over on the left hand side. There we go. So now I'm going to bump up to two. You can ladder with as many as you want. I kind of liked the slim look of just two beads. You could move over to some Tyla beads, Checkmates tiles, Bugles, Fire Polish. I could go on and on, but whatever beads you like. Okay, and you just continue it on. And you want to frequently, there we go, you want to frequently now test this to try it on. And what I would do, what I did with my, and you just continue on to the infinity. Now, um, for this end, what I did here is, for length purposes, what you want to do is, you want to make sure that you finish it off. I finished this end off first, right, after I took it off. I finished this end off, so I, as I went along, I could measure. But I finished this end off first for the broadcast so I could get into the wall knot section, if that makes sense. Okay? So, um, okay. So to close it off, you're just going to ladder, ladder, ladder. Then can you see how I just did a little bit of macrame flat knot here? But again, that could also be a silk wrap. And as I did that, I just had my, my um, this piece from the infinity stitch I'll also weave in. We're really good about weaving in now. But here for the flat macrame, I'd taper down to one. And then just like we do normally. I don't know, I'd cut about a foot of thread. And I'll bring it around and I'll macrame all of these guys together. These two, as well as the thread I was laddering with. Or you could simply just weave it back through, if that makes sense. Okay? Flat knot, uh, macrame, macrame, macrame. Leave enough room so that your button slips through like this. And then I just took my ends, tied them in an overhand knot. So the opening was the correct length. And then I added my sixth sense beads right on the end. That's it. So you just finish it off as you would any of your laddering bracelets. You could macrame, there's a million different ways. And I know that you guys all have different ways that you like to close your macrame, so, or close your wrap bracelets. So it really just depends on what it is that you like. But you can see this section, um, I tried to make these kind of even, but I got a little carried away as you can see. What a surprise is I got carried away a little bit with the length of this loomed piece. So, um, and remember when I did this for the demo, I did it across the short end of the board, but in real life, so that you have enough leather to work with, 
I would work on the length, the long end of the board that way. Okay, so that's it. And this is a great, you don't even have to add the second section, the second wrap section on. You can just leave it like that. And I said that I would add the, um, the sea star charm. So I think I'm going to add it. Oops, I need to. Um, do I have my thread burner here? I think it's on my desk. Doesn't matter. I need to thread burn that little section away. But I think I'll just add my little sea star with my jump ring. I've got a jump ring right there. And I'm going to open this up and decide where you want it. I don't know. I'm using two chain nose pliers. Whoops, that didn't open at all, did it? Sorry, I've got to get a little closer to my eyes. There we go. This goes on. And then I think I can get it. There's a little bit of space right there that I think I can get it right in between two of those beads. Gosh, I can't see. There we go. But you can put it anywhere. You could also slide it on as you're laddering. But I kind of forgot to do that because I was so excited to get it done and get it to Karen that I forgot all about this poor little sea star. So it can go there, it could go there, it could go here, it could go over here, wherever. But I think, it could even go in the walnut section. It could dangle from one of these guys. Whatever worked for you. Okay, so everything, you guys, is all over on our website at beadshop.com, okay? We'll have episode notes up for this uh, project. It'll be up next week. And if you're not familiar with episode notes, episode notes are kind of the, the show notes um, that Drea writes. She does a wonderful job every week, and so they're there for you to download. Um, and they usually generally go up about a week after the broadcast and they're super helpful. They're also um, hyperlinked so you can just go and find all of the ingredients that we used. We really, really appreciate it. You know, when we do our live broadcasts, we really appreciate that you guys go over to beadshop.com and support our small business. Um, we really just cannot thank you enough for that. Um, before I sign off and we'll have Brandwin move the camera, um, we do have a special today, which is uh, good times as always. Um, it is Wednesday, August 7th. If you're watching this on replay, I'm sorry that this offer doesn't stand, but if you sign up for our newsletters over at beadshop.com, it's the best way to stay in touch with us. You'll get notifications when we have kits, like Brittany's wonderful kit like this that we're doing next week, um, of our sales, of our specials. We have a lot of giveaways and stuff like that. So we really, um, that's the way, the best way to stay in communication with us. But today, for those of you guys who were newsletter, um, newsletter uh, subscribers, you saw that if you add seed, seeds, sorry, seeds 25 uh, in your um, order notes, it'll knock 25% off all seed beads in stock. So it is the day to stock up on all of your seed bead mixes and stuff like that. Sale ends tonight, uh, 8, 7, 20, 19 at midnight Pacific time, okay? So jump in and, um, and uh, check out your um, uh, your sale seed beads. I'm distracted because there's a monster next to me. The other thing I wanted to mention with seed beads, and there he is. I know you guys wanted to see the Alfredo, so be a good boy for everybody on the on the shoot. There we go. There he is. Um, we are going to be bringing back, so many of you have been asking about our monthly mixes and about our monthly mixes that we've had in the past. So Janice and I got our heads together and we have picked 
three that we love. And you guys are going to see those coming back for um, a limited, maybe not so limited, I don't know, but they're going to be back on our website because I know so many of you love, love, love those monthly mixes. So stay tuned for your newsletter for some monthly mix re-releases. Yes, here is the Naughty Pants himself. You're being such a good boy. You're such a good boy. Yeah. I'm going to be back on Friday. He's so distracting, isn't he? He's such a big guy. Um, I'm going to be with a really fun free tip Friday for you guys. Uh, we are going to be working with some briolettes. We just launched four new delicious briolette flavors, so check those out. I'm also going to be working with the 28 gauge wire that we also just um, got in. And I know so many of you on the bead table have been asking for the perfect summer earring. He sees Papa, he sees Chris, so he wants to go. Um, but that summer earring is going to be great on Friday. So join me on Friday for Free Tip Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. This Naughty Pants may or may not be here, but say hi to everybody, Alfred. Thank everybody for coming. Thanks so much for this epic broadcast. We really appreciate your support here at beadshop.com. All of your shares and comments and emails, we think it's wonderful. So thanks so much, and I'll see you guys on Friday. All right.